there's a lot of noise online from people who haven't been in the financial systems like BlackRock's going to own all of the Bitcoins. It's not. It's a clients driven thing. It's a fund. Right. And you you buy a share of the fund and that gives you your access to Bitcoin. It's not like they fund run you into all of this stuff. But how I think about it is we've got two worlds out there. TradFi, crypto. Mm -hmm. And the ETF is probably, I think of these as kind of, I think of the crypto world as in like a digital nation state in that kind of Balaji idea. And what we're building is a trade agreement. So you can get direct investment from the TradFi world into the crypto world. So these are kind of trade agreements. This one, the ETH, um, spot ETF, and that allows money to come into the system, which the system desperately needs right now because the crypto economy has not been growing. Yes, it, we might be in crypto spring, so it come off the lows, but the economy's slow. We can see it everywhere. The activity is not great right now. So what you need is some new investment. And that's what this does. It's a, it's a, it's a trade agreement between TradFi and crypto, but doesn't mean that anybody's going to actually do the trade. They need to, you know, just because we've got an ETF, just because Larry wants to sell it to his customers, doesn't mean the customers want to buy it yet. So we have to wait and see. It's like we saw with the Van Eck, um, 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 East Futures ETF. They did a big marketing campaign, did everything, almost zero volume. So, so far, right? Yeah. No, that's right. Well, speaking of that, you know, where do you see the state of Ethereum right now? I think it's exactly where it would be after you've just gone through winter and it's a bit of spring. So if you think of what spring is like, one day's raining, one day's sunny, one day, you know, it's like, it's a bit meh, you know? Yep. And so ETH, there's plenty of stuff going on, activities relatively slow because NFT market, which is a big part of the ETH, is in its bear market because it's an asset and it lags the ETH economy, like houses lag the US stock market, stuff like that. So it's it's relatively slow. But still, it is the broadest based and deepest economy of all of them. Yeah. So for me, it's just like, yeah, fine. It'll, it'll, new stuff will come, new opportunities will arise. Yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been quite a long winter. Although, you know, most of the space bottomed in October last year. ETH bottomed in June. Then most of the space bottomed in October and some stuff, some alts are still bleeding now. So... We bit that's almost a year since the bottom was in. Well, it, it is a year since the bottom was in. So I actually think of these as one year down cycles, three year up cycles, with the first year and a half being kind of spring like, and then we go into summer and then we go into fall. So so that all lies ahead for me. And it just feels that we just need a bit of liquidity to come into financial markets. We need any trigger, maybe one of the banks struggles and the Fed has to do something. Maybe the Fed decide that, you know what, yields are getting too high now. We'll need to cap them with yield curve control. Or maybe they just see inflation falling fast and they start cutting the rate. But all of that feels like it's coming into play and the crypto market will start sniffing it out early. Great. Raul Pal, the co-founder and CEO of Real Vision, the world's preeminent financial media platform, explains that the cryptocurrency industry is pushing for the approval of Bitcoin ETFs and other investment opportunities, signaling a shift in the industry and the potential for significant developments in the future. BlackRock's ownership of Bitcoin is not accurate, as it is a client-driven fund. The importance of the crypto ETF as a trade agreement to bring new investment into the slow-growing crypto economy is emphasized, but its success depends on customer demand. The Bitcoin market is currently in a slow period, similar to spring weather, but new opportunities will arise and the market will eventually rebound. Grayscale is pushing forward to turn its Grayscale Bitcoin Trust into a Bitcoin Exchange Traded Fund ETF, signaling their commitment to bringing innovation and broader investment opportunities to the crypto world. Grayscale has submitted a registration statement to the SEC to list shares of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust on the NYSE, potentially opening the doors to a new era in financial markets. They also have ambitions to diversify their crypto portfolio with an Ethereum Futures ETF. Major players are vying for SEC approval for a Bitcoin ETF, reflecting the industry's push for diverse investment opportunities. 
Raoul Pal highlights the importance of Bitcoin as a secure asset and discusses the impact of debt crises and JP Morgan's dominance. BlackRock's involvement in the cryptocurrency space since 2017 and their discussion of a flight to safety suggests a significant shift in the industry. Banks continue to discuss transitioning to blockchain rails despite the economic value being transacted on major blockchains. The future bull market will involve the widespread adoption of different blockchains and the tokenization of real-world assets such as concert tickets and hotel rooms through NFTs. DeFi will likely split between KYC and ML due to regulatory issues, but more brands, people and sports teams are entering the space leading to significant developments in the next few years. Watch this video as Raoul Pal explains why everyone is wrong about the Bitcoin ETF, and his predictions at the end of this video will shock you. I, I was in Europe and went through the European banking crisis and the sovereign crisis. We thought all the governments were going to go bust and all of the banks. We had Cyprus where they took all the money of people's bank accounts. And so I realized that we need an asset that was maybe a bearer asset that we can keep hold of. And the only one really was gold. And gold is not easy to deal with. Yeah, it's big and heavy and you've got to get somebody specially to store it and all of this. And that's why I discovered Bitcoin at the time and how I could sell custody this asset. Nobody had a claim on it. And I think Larry's now seeing the ripple effects of that, you know, because this debt crisis keeps rolling, right? We keep building the debts, keep building the debts. The economic growth is too slow to service the debts. And so the next phase of this was these um, regional banks. And Larry can see, look around him and see that JP Morgan essentially is eating the world. People have very limited choice here and there's going to be an appetite for it. Um, so, you know, what's interesting is an institution like BlackRock doesn't go into things lightly. Don't forget, they started talking about this in 2021. So we knew they were coming. So I imagine that they've probably been in this space since about 2017. And they've done the research and the work and everything else. Now, a lot of people say, well, BlackRock's got X trillion dollars under management. Yes, but that kind of a lot of its index funds and stuff like that. It's not like Larry waves his fist and said, let's buy $10 billion of big... It's not how it works, right? It's a customer-driven business. They have demand, they send it to their customers. Um, so it was interesting to see somebody of that seniority at that level of the finance industry talk about the flight to safety. These are things you're not supposed to talk about, but BlackRock's not, not a bank, the sort of thing Jamie Dimon can't talk about. You know, it hasn't been speculatively driven. Well, yes, it has, and, and no, it hasn't. So if I look at most of the larger blockchains, they all have some underlying economic value being transacted. You know, there's there's transmission, um, transfer payments, transmissions, all of that kind of stuff in XRP. You know, there's been lots of things from DeFi to NFTs coming out of ETH. You know, Bitcoin is its own thing, the store of value narrative, et cetera, et cetera. So we see that it's just not broken out to the big application. Right. Don't forget, when I got into this space was 2012, I said, well, the financial system is going to go on blockchain rails. Here we are 11 years later, we're still not there. We're just starting, right? Yes. But yes, it is going to go there. We see all the banks talking about it. They're all working on They've got huge blockchain teams to figure out. And I was with some people last night here in Miami. It's like, the other issue is, well, if JP Morgan uses one blockchain, let's say they use XRP, and Goldman uses ETH, well, how the hell are they going to move the assets? So then they solve interoperability. Because they, it's too much of a career risk then to choose the wrong blockchain if they don't solve that. But different blockchains have different attributes and we be um, good for different things. So my view on this full market that lies ahead whenever it comes is it's more of an everything, everywhere, all at once bull market. Because it's my belief that a lot of people have been working on tokenization of real world assets, so the, yes. the, the financial system. We've seen a lot of people experimenting with what we can do with NFTs. Yeah, there's some big breakthroughs like Solana can can create a million NFTs for a hundred bucks. Okay, well, that means we can do ticketing. You know, you're from the music industry. Why is that not all? You know, why do the tickets that we stick in a drawer to prove that we went to an amazing concert 20 years ago, why is that not an NFT? Of course it should be. And what can we do with that? Hotel rooms, all of that stuff. 
So we've got that with DeFi. DeFi is probably going to split between KYC, AML, DeFi, because the institutions want to get involved, but they can't because of reg regulatory problems. And then there'll be non-versions of that. And then we're seeing a lot of brands and a lot of people coming into the space and sports teams. Welcome to the Future of Finance with Extra Skills Crypto Courses. Our seasoned experts, veterans of the crypto game, are here to decode the complex world of cryptocurrency for you. Our comprehensive courses cover everything from blockchain fundamentals to advanced trading strategies. Here's the catch. We're offering a limited time exclusive discount on our crypto courses. Get access to these invaluable resources at an unbelievable discount of more than 50% off. Hear it from our students who've already transformed their financial futures. I turned a small investment into a profit machine. Thanks to extra skills, I'm not just trading crypto, I'm trading success. Don't wait, the crypto market never sleeps and neither should your ambitions. Click the link below to access our exclusive crypto courses. But wait, there's more. We urge you to take advantage of this incredible offer. Click on the link in the description below the video to get these courses at a discounted price. Don't miss this extra skills, empowering you for crypto success.